You there, listen up for a second. I've got a question. Do you have hair in this area? That's called your chest. If you've got hair there, that probably means that you're a man. Or maybe you're a Turkish stripper. I don't know, I'm not gonna judge. I'm assuming you're a man though. If you have hair here, now, you might be a hipster man-child. That's a little bit different, and I'm here to help. I've teed up with Dollar Shave Club to bring you cheap razors. They're cheap by inexpensive, but not cheap in quality. We get some high quality razor handles here. Starting right in the middle is their 4X plan. You get a shipment of razors each month, you get a kick-ass razor handle, and your face looks smooth. How cheap is inexpensive? You line those words up? Well, in the case of Dollar Shave Club, we're dealing with six bucks a month. Six dollars a month. That's just a little bit more than a five dollar foot long, but it's infinitely better because it's gonna last you longer than a five dollar foot long, you greedy, hungry bastards. So, you get the razor handle. Do you want more? Because there is more. If you do sign up, you get these little sweet things. They're for your bum. They're called One White Charlies, and they keep your beak hole clean. I highly recommend you get them. I, of course, I want you to get the razors and keep your face clean, but keep the rest of you clean too. Girls like that. Guys like that too. I'm, I'm guessing, I assume though, everybody wants clean butts, right? There you go. How do you get all this good stuff? You go to dollarshaveclub.com slash hooniverse. Just th that's it. Go there, dollarshaveclub.com slash hooniverse. The words will be right here in front of my face, which you're staring at. So go there, sign up, join the fun, stop being a Turkish stripper, and join the rest of society. For now, let's get back into some car stuff though, shall we? Everybody out there loves a good Grand Tourer or a good sports car. Somewhere in the middle lies the Aston Martin V8 Vantage and the V12, but that's more of a Grand Touring Bruiser. With Aston Martin, their cars are very expensive and they're expensive for a good reason. They're beautiful to look at, the engines are handmade, there's a lot going on here of a bespoke automobile produced in low volumes that commands the price tag that these things get. That's why some people opt for Nissan GTRs and Porsche 911s. Also, those cars are better performers, though they're not better looking. Now though, we have a different version of the V8 Vantage. This is the 2015 Aston Martin V8 Vantage GT, and the starting price is $99,000. If that doesn't sound like a bargain to you, it's because, well, you're like me and you don't make enough money to afford that. But for the average people that can shop in that price range, this is one hell of a deal. There's nothing like a good V8, and this is a good one. Under the hood sits a 4.7 liter unit from Aston Martin themselves. They don't shop these things out, they build them themselves in-house by their hands, and that's great. Uh, they used to have 4.3 liters in these things, but switched to 4.7s years ago. Here in the Vantage GT, that's good for 430 horsepower, which is a good amount. I would like to see the Vantage V8 have a little bit more as time marches on. The c competition is leaving this thing in the dust if you have this car compete directly against Grand Touring and sports cars in its segment. That means you're looking at, you know, the V8 R8, which is probably a little bit more, a little bit more expensive if you get the cheap car, or less expensive, excuse me. Um, you've got a Porsche 911, and you've even got the Nissan GTR. The problem for most of that segment is that the GTR will decimate all. That was just an unintentional Fast and Furious line. Um, the Porsche will just do wonders, and that Audi is a great car as well. Where the Aston Martin excels is just being a great Grand Tour, a little bit less of a sports car. It can be comfortable, but it's stiff enough to really enjoy the Hooniverse Highway hooning grounds here in Ortega. Uh, and then the gearbox is fantastic. It's got a six-speed manual, which is one of the hallmarks, I think, of the GT. You know, now that the V12 Vantage has moved to an automatic only paddle shiftable unit, it's nice that you can still get this really well shifting manual here in the V8. Uh, the gates are supremely well defined and each shift slots in rather nicely. It's a great unit and I like touching this unit and make all the jokes you want in the comments about that last sentence. <clears throat> 
Another area though, where the V8 Vantage GT, or any Aston Martin for that matter, truly shines, is in the looks department. These things are stunners, and they have been for decades. Now, some of you might find that to be a fault. They haven't changed the looks up forever, but you could say the same thing about Porsche. Yes, their design is evolving, and it seems like the Vantage GT is certainly due for a refresh, but you can't deny that it doesn't look good as it sits right now, especially in this racing livery inspired color scheme. If you don't like this green on this yellow, there's something wrong with you. And you are entitled to your opinion, but your opinion is wrong. Why is it wrong? Look at Aston Martin's racing history. They're trading on that a little bit here, and it works oh so well. If you don't like the green and yellow, you don't have to get the green and yellow. You can get it in blue with red. You can get it in Skyfall Silver, which I believe comes with a white bit of lipstick and the on the cant rails. Um, and then there are a few other colors to choose from as well in the Vantage GT palette. Additionally, if you like the wind in your hair, you can opt for a convertible. I'll stick with the coupe though. There's one area where Aston Martin certainly has been paying attention over the years, and that helps to evolve this car a little bit, even though it doesn't look like it on the outside. And that is in the steering. They fitted this car with a quicker steering rack, and you can tell, additionally, it's properly heavy. This isn't falsely tuned with an electronic power steering system. This is the weight of the car, you're actually feeling it. You know where the front wheels are and what they're doing, and that goes a long way to inspiring confidence in any vehicle. But really, the biggest news here is the price. If an Aston Martin is something you should aspire to, yet never be able to afford. A Porsche 911 is something you should aspire to, and maybe someday you can afford it. You know, they say they start below 100 anytime you start adding any options to a Porsche, the price shoots to the moon. But you can get a great 911 for around $120,000. This car I'm driving here starts at $99,000, which is a mind-blowing number. The car I'm specifically driving is about $110,000 because it just has a few options. The most minor of ticks on the option list checkbox. So for $110,000, you're not getting a five-year-old Vantage, you're getting a brand new one with the warranty still intact. Oh, and boy, does this car sound good. That V8 really loves to run up into the rev range. I mean, basically what this car is, is Britain's Corvette. Probably the C6 Corvette, because the C7 has, is now too advanced. And I mean that in the best way. All of the great aspects of the C6 Corvette, which is a great driver's car, feel similar in a slightly different way, if that sentence makes any sense, here in the V8 Vantage. You're sitting far back, you've got a nice low slung hood out in front of you, you've got a great gearbox and you've got tremendous noise. Yes, the Corvette would be faster, it's lighter, it's got, you know, all that going on, but you're not gonna look any better. In fact, you pull up to the curb in this and people are gonna pay attention. suspension is appropriately firm you know I'm bouncing around a little bit because it's nice and tight uh, the gearbox as I said is fantastic with that quicker steering rack you can really negotiate a road like this very well when I hop in the car and go home I'm gonna be comfortable because the seats are great these are the ones out of the V12 Vantage S um, the audio system well it sounds good I can't get my phone to play through it um, the navigation is terrible but they're working on changing that you know, you keep looking at what they've done to the Vanquish, which is make serious strides. But honestly, don't even think about that car anymore. Think about the future of Aston Martin and their AMG partnership. That's when we're going to start seeing seriously upgraded interiors in terms of technology in the Aston Martin world. But you're probably going to have to wait, I'd say, three years for that to happen. For now, though, shut all this shit off and listen to that. Honestly, the driving dynamics in this car are fabulous. You can feel the rear end come around perfectly. It doesn't step out too much. If you turn traction control off, I mean, you can get this thing sideways. It's so controllable. Um, 
I've driven, I've been fortunate to drive a few Aston Martins on racetracks where you have a little bit more room and there you can really have some fun, play with some tail out stuff. I'm not going to do that on a public road uh, because I'm not an idiot and I don't want to pay for this beautiful V8 Vantage GT and it's a Loro Green paintwork. So instead, we'll just have fun at 7 tenths. And for those of you in the comments who like to say, I don't drive the cars hard enough, kiss my ass, it doesn't show up on camera. Also, this isn't my car. <laughs>